After a huge win at Wichita State, Mason marched into the top 25. Hopes of a tournament berth began to seem more and more like a real possibility. But with the new development of Tony Skin's suspension, experts began to believe that Mason's tournament hopes were in jeopardy. It would be an anxiety-filled Sunday anticipating their potential selection. And I sat next to Tony Skin, my wife on one side, me on the other. And we listened to Greg Gumbel. And he announced the first bracket for the NCAA tournament, no George Mason. He announced the second bracket for the NCAA tournament, no George Mason. He announced the third bracket of the NCAA tournament and said my two favorite words in the English language. Michigan State will face George Mason. And the room erupted. I fell on my knees and hugged Tony Skin because I knew what was going through his mind. I knew he felt like if we don't get in, this is my fault. And Tony hugged me and said, thank goodness. I could not have stood it if we didn't get in because of what I did. I said, Tony, I love you. I care about you. Now you need to become the best cheerleader in America. And he said, Coach, I promise you I'm going to be the best cheerleader ever. Come Friday night when we play Michigan State, I'm going to be going crazy on the sideline, cheering us on to victory. I said, I know you will. At the end of the show, Jim Nance and Billy Packer came on, along with Craig Littlepage, the chair of the selection committee. And they blistered Craig. How can George Mason be selected? They're not good enough. They're from a weak league. They're not very good. And Craig Littlepage tried to defend his selection. What I did was I turned the TV right off. I turned to my team and said, look it, I told you. The experts have never seen us play. They don't know how good you are. Go home and put your head on the pillow and visualize us playing the best basketball of this season. The relief of getting into the field was soon replaced by the reality of the fierce competition they would face. First up, Tom Izzo at Michigan State. They were perennial tournament stalwarts that had gone to the Final Four six times in Izzo's 16 years with the Spartans. How would Mason compete? How could they compete? My coaching staff and my sons were working diligently to find an Achilles heel. And the only thing we found that was consistent in Michigan State's losses was they had three outstanding scorers that if all three of them scored in double figures, Michigan State was undefeated. Dad, Coach L, we've got to shut down one of their three big guns. Our best chance to do that was Paul Davis, their big man. Will Thomas, our big guy, was going to be assigned to guard him, and Will was perhaps one of the best defensive players in the country. And we gave Will the challenge of shutting down Paul Davis, their seven-foot center. When the game began, Tony Skin, who had been suspended, sat on the sideline dressed in a beautiful blue suit and a blue and gold tie. He looked like a model for GQ magazine. And he sat there, stood there, cheering wildly for his teammates. Come on, guys, you can do it. And the game began in a fury with Michigan State scoring three five-second layups where our guys did not get back quickly enough. At the first TV timeout, I said, fellas, look at we have one game plan in mind, and it includes stopping the five-second layup. Can we do it? And every one of the players looked at each other and started barking to each other. We have to stop the five-second layup. They don't get another one the rest of the game. And they didn't. We got back every single time for the rest of the night. Gabe Norwood, who moved into the starting lineup, was outstanding. He took Tony Skin's place as a wing player did an outstanding job defensively, caught a tremendous alley-oop dunk midway through the game to give us a lead. And then with just a minute or two to go, Michigan State was behind in pressing, and we needed a press attack to break their backs and to shut down their momentum. Gabe Norwood took the ball out of bounds. Jai Lewis ran a step and go, stepping toward the ball like he was coming to meet the pass and then going long like a whiteout in football. Gabe Norwood, whose dad was on the Penn State staff, whose 
Penn State team had just won a bowl game uh, with his brother Jordan catching a number of TD passes. Gabe looked like a quarterback. He looked like Joe Montana throwing to, to Jerry Rice. Jai Lewis catching it and slamming it and closing the door on any Michigan State comeback thoughts. And George Mason moved on to the next round, beating Michigan State, who had been in last year's Final Four, 75 to 65. When I arrived in the locker room, there was only one thing written on the board. And those words bring goosebumps to me every time I think about it. The words were, Tony is back.